He has a church with actual people. God created only male and female designed to be married to each other. And those are the only two that can create babies together. So welcome back everyone to Project Nihilist. I am your host. And in this video, we're going to watch an infinite regress of Christian apologist Devin and Fred gay bashing one of their own. If you're not familiar with Fred, I actually did a video recently on one of his videos, so check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. So some months back, two pastors, Dr. James White and Jeff Durbin, debated Brandon Robertson, a self-proclaimed gay pastor, on the topic of same-sex relationships and are they biblical or not. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, then you already know what side of the spectrum I fall on when it comes to this whole discussion, the only one that resides in truth. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm a nut through and through and I think these people have lost their goddamn minds. Let's get it poppin'. Brandon Robertson is a progressive, hyper-liberal, LGBTQ plus affirming quote-unquote pastor. No! I just found out he has a church with actual people. He stands behind an actual pulpit and delivers messages, which is crazy. They're all gonna laugh at you! So it's these types of idiots out there pretending to advocate for free speech until it's someone else's speech. And with the advent of apps like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, not only is that creating a platform for many false teachers to thrive and spread misinformation, but unrestricted access for people to heap onto themselves teachers that suit their lifestyle. So Freddie here did the same shit in the last video where he's constantly adjusting the zoom on his face mid-sentence. So if you didn't catch that, his problem is unrestricted access to false teachings. They're all going to laugh at you. Brandon Robertson is one of those guys who's taken advantage of that, but they absolutely destroy his rhetoric. Rhetoric. And his teachings. I'm going to play some clips. And so I've not seen the original debate that Fred's talking about, but in his clips, he cut out Brandon saying almost anything. He barely gets a word in edgewise. Show you just how thorough this demolition was. He takes, he takes it deeper. This I'm going to leave out some of this discussion because it's irrelevant. It just sounds like a bunch of children fighting over the rules to Red Rover. This man said Isaiah 53 is not about Christ. <laughs> then who is it about? Who is it about? We read things like this. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. And for the next two minutes, Fred reads from the book of Isaiah. And at the end, he says, see, who else could they have been talking about? And it reminds me of like that prophecy from the Harry Potter series. And in the book, it said Harry Potter or Neville Longbottom. This is just patently false to say Isaiah 53 is not about the Messiah. So nothing of relevance to offer beyond your claim that it's about your Messiah. When we look back at the scriptures from our perspective, we are putting a misinterpretation on the scripture. We're putting a bias, a almost a borderline anti-Semitic interpretation on the scriptures. Notice what he says about the writer of Hebrews. When we go, when we're taking the Hebrew Bible and we try to read back in Christian understandings, one, it's an ah historical, a historical, unscholarly approach to understanding what the Hebrew Bible is. It's offensive and borders on anti-Semitic. So, when the right, would you call the writer of Hebrews anti-Semitic? I think the writer of Hebrews is terribly problematic in many ways. Yeah. Okay. What, <laughs> bro? What are you talking about, man? Okay. So those definitely weren't my memes. And Brandon has probably been harassed his entire life for being the way that he is. And the fact that he's more empathetic makes me feel more empathy for him. So he did what you're saying you you shouldn't do, and that's that he took the the scriptures from the Old Testament and showed the fulfillment in Jesus Christ. And Gospel according to Matthew is chocked full in both direct quotation and allusion to Old Testament passages of the fulfillment that Jesus Christ brought in his life and death and now resurrection. He, now him to think that his interpretation and perspective is somehow greater than and more accurate than the author of the book of Hebrews. Let's not talk about the arrogance and dismissing Brandon's interpretation while supporting your own without offering any type of counter argument. Who looked back at the Old Testament and applied Christ to those passages throughout the whole book. According to him, that is wrong, unreal. So I'm an atheist, and when I read the Bible, it does feel like the New Testament hijacked some shit from the Old Testament. 
James White pushes back and says this. He, do you think that's just Luke uh, throwing that in there and the Jews didn't say that? Yes, most likely. Okay. That just goes to show you that somebody can have the ability, the degrees, the, the ability to communicate and articulate their thoughts about a certain subject and not be regenerated. Brandon Robertson is not regenerated. So I had to look up that regeneration thing, and it's that whole second birth, born again stuff. And Fred, how do you fucking know he's not regenerated? Hell, he might be having coffee every morning with Jesus for all you know. Brandon Robertson is so open-minded that his brain is literally falling out and we get to see the aftermath. This is the result. And I, my goodness, y'all, his entire premise of his argument is because I don't interpret it that way. It, 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 it contradicts my lifestyle. So I can't view it that way. And, and my addiction to sin. Yeah, because I can't sit around with Brandon and talk about how much we love Vag. He's got to be a terrible, miserable son of a bitch. It's not being satisfied. We're not talking about your wife. So that can't be what Jesus meant. Jesus himself, he is saying, interpreted the Bible. What? Jesus came to fulfill the law. Jesus is the law. Jesus is, is part of the Trinity. They don't offer anything meaningful to the conversation. They just have these platitudes and confidence and being shocked and going. <laughs> so Jesus don't got to interpret nothing. He brought it into fruition. Fruition. <laughs> the point at which a plan or project has been realized. Brought it into fruition and... Ain't that just convenient that just because you don't feel a certain way about it, just because you don't align with it, that that that's not true. That, that the typical way of thinking for people these days is is perversion of God's word. And it's real out here in these streets. I mean, seriously, out with the old spiritual mumble jumbo, the superstitions and the backward ways. We're living in days now where a lot of these people have succumbed to a reprobate mind. Reprobate. An unprincipled person, often used humorlessly, humor, humorously, or affectionately. And basically that means that they've taken what has always been restricted and off limits to it now it somehow fits within their boundaries and parameters and anything goes. Everything is willy-nilly, fly by the seat of your pants. Yes, sir. A veritable age of reason, like the one they had in France. Everything is acceptable to these people. They think evil is good and vice versa, when that's just not the case at all. I mean... My goodness gracious, this man is lost, for real, because... So Brandon doesn't really say anything that haywire compared to the other thousands of denominations of Christianity. So Fred needed to include all of this foreplay before we got into the gay bashing. They don't offer up anything other than hating on him, saying they love him, and that he can fix himself. And that only then will Jesus love him and he'll get into heaven everlasting and all that horse shit this nihilist does not believe in. Oh, what I see is, is false prophet. Prophet. I must have a fundamental misunderstanding of what the word prophet means. I do have a video on my channel of a prophet exercising a werewolf demon from a lawyer. My question really is, though, does Devin think that he's a prophet? All of the prophets that I'm aware of claim to know God's will and what the future holds. I don't think that sounds like Brandon. And wolf in sheep's clothing all day long written all over this one. And I'm not saying he can't change. He could definitely reach repentance. I pray for him. But at the same time, I got to be honest, it's real difficult for me to feel sorry for someone. The arrogance of suggesting that Brandon is in need of your pity makes you look like an arrogant, vile asshole. Who's openly and, and willfully blaspheming God's word and choosing to align with Satan and all the while cherry, pick, cherry picking from the Bible, picking bits and pieces and trying to twist it to fit his propaganda, to fit his narrative and his, his, his agenda. But he's leading an entire congregation and who knows how many wannabe followers of Jesus away from the truth. Devin's hubris and hypocrisy and the level of mental gymnastics that he's doing right now blows my fucking mind. This is lying. That's what it is. Open deceit. Actually, Brandon, is, you, is you've become an apostate. Then you are a Mandalorian no more. This is a personal question. You don't have to answer it, but you have admitted to struggling with, with homosexual desires and lusts before you fell into apostasy. Correct? Yes. Okay. So you teach others to entertain their lusts, satisfy, satisfy their lusts, things that God explicitly condemns in his word. And so I love you in, in Jesus' name, but you are an apostate. You are a deceiver. I beg you for your forgiveness. How can I atone? Leave apostate. 
There's no question about it. Brandon Robertson is an apostate. Now, for those who don't know what that is, an apostate is someone who rejects Christianity, rejects the Bible, rejects the foundational tenets of Christianity. Not a heretic. He's a heretic, but he's beyond a heretic. He is an apostate. He denies that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Well, maybe Fred knows that little bit of information from somewhere else, because in his video, he definitely doesn't show this to be true. And what is it that thing in the Bible about lying? He denies the faith, yet he continues to spout rhetoric. Because you say it with such confidence, Fredo, it must be true, right? That sounds like Christianity. He is deceiving so many people and leading them straight to hell. Bravo. One describes homosexual sex as two men desiring one another. Read back into an ancient first century text, something that didn't Because exist. mankind is still mankind and still made in the image of God and still sins in the same way. Fallen. Unlike you, we allow the word of God to define those categories. And the word of God specifically says, you shall not have sex with a man as you do a woman. It doesn't give you any oh. little outs. <laughs> Got <laughs> you're yeah. bringing you're bringing in your selected external yeah. sources to overthrow the consistent of testimony research into the ancient Greco-Roman world. And Son, I was studying this stuff when you were still in diapers. Don't I was a Starfleet engineer for 52 years. Don't give me your <laughs> 10 year stuff. OK. He said, I'm bringing in a full decade. He said, your decade, son, when you were born, when you were in diapers, I was in this. I was a theologian. I was a scholar. I was a wise, biblically discerned man of God. Oh, my goodness. Besides the obvious fallacy, Devin, you just look like you're juggling this guy's nuts and loving it. I love this. James White. <laughs> James White arrogant when he's the one that appeals to his own credentials, his years of experience and knowledge of studying this topic. You've already rejected God's authority. We reject yours. Got him. But it gets worse. I believe this is when James White utterly destroys Brandon Robertson. God created this world to function in a particular fashion. And if it doesn't function that particular fashion, it brings death. Brandon, you fucking HMO. Death is all your fault, man. What the fuck are you thinking? That's Which, what that's what is we obviously see not true. Loving consensual same sex relationships do not bring death. They don't bring life. And in fact, the, the average literally fact, the average lifespan of the active homosexual is considerably shorter than the married uh, heterosexual. So I'm 40 years old. I don't suspect we've been gathering this data for very long. And I'm like to know where it come from because I like my sources. I think James just pulled this out of his ass and is that pretending it's a candy bar? That That's a fact. You know James. that to be a fact. That's not the fact. You have your facts when it comes to homosexuals in our lives and relationships are shoddy at best and offensive. Um, Brandon, and well, let's just deal with let's deal with what Pastor James said to you. He said that homosexual relationships don't bring life. Oh no, Brandon, your gayness is going to destroy the planet. And I'm straight, and I can't have children. Does that mean that I'm evil too? You disagreed yeah. with that? I don't believe that the homosexual relationships bring life. I don't believe that the goal of relationship is primarily procreation. No, I didn't ask you that. He said homosexual relationships do not bring life. You agree with that, right? First, the overture. Relationships do not need Answer to Answer the question. Procreate. <laughs> it Does the homosexual lifestyle create life? Here comes the crescendo. I'm what lifestyle means, Jeff. You're being... You're, Does you're, homosexual sexuality... We cannot procreate, of course. You cannot. You cannot. I get it, Brandon. I had a Christian tell me one time that I wasn't alive because I can't procreate. Swerving, bobbing, weaving, twerking all away from that question. My goodness, y'all. Like, waging sin leads to death. Homosexual practices, adultery, greed, idolatry, envy, gluttony, none of these things bring life. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Yeah, I'm not tracking with this line of logic because you can be a gluttonous motherfucker who lusts and is greedy as hell and have babies. It is. It doesn't bring life in any way. Not from a biological perspective. It doesn't bring life spiritually. It doesn't bring life emotionally. It is a lifestyle of death. 
was a beautiful thing to, to watch and listen to. And this broken man, Brandon Robertson, he needs to keep hearing the truth until one day it just sinks in that, no, 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 no. Jesus does not affirm you in your sin. He doesn't approve of the actions that you're involved in. Just because you like it because it feels right doesn't make it the way. I don't give a shit that this guy loves Jesus just as much as them. They just are so insecure that they can't stand the concept that, they do, that he doesn't like vads the way that we all do and promising can come out of homosexual practices or any of the sins listed in the Bible. So I left the bottom of this screen in the crop because this guy's like, help me fight cancel culture, send me money, buy my merch, and if I get kicked off, I'm over on Rumble. The fact is, Fred and Devin are just ignorant bigots spreading their hate and tribalism. Ash Brandon session, but it couldn't be more crystal clear to me that they really care about this man and where he ends up. And people tend to forget that real love, that agape kind. Agape. Agape. That agape kind that wants the best for someone, that kind doesn't rejoice at people doing wrong. And, and they, they see fellow brothers and sisters strain off into lawlessness. Real love speaks the truth, corrects, and helps guide those people away from helps guide those people away from from that behavior because we know what it leads to i know what it leads to which is why i share videos like this and use my platform to spread the good news these dudes have completely forgotten about the lessons in the new testament and you two motherfuckers need jesus we've all pulled up to a traffic light at some point in our life license no license most of us know how to operate when it comes to pulling up to one of those green means go red means stop yellow is kind of one of those up for interpretation sort of things depending on the person the situation the circumstance some people speed up to try to beat that red flash others slow down it just depends no it doesn't just depends the only reason i speed up for yellow light is when i don't want to stop in the middle of the intersection and it is a sin, I mean a violation of the law, to drive without a driver's license. Dude, why did you add that caveat? But the Almighty, when it comes to him, he doesn't do in-betweens. He doesn't do yellows. He's a green light, red light sort of judge. You know, that type of judge that puts somebody to death for working on a Sunday. So yeah, that's about all that I can handle. These fucking people have lost their minds, and people that think like them are fucking nuts. Let me know what you think in the comments below.